What is going on, everyone? Welcome in here to the Better Sports Betting Show on a Thursday afternoon uh, on Fantasy Alarm, Better Sports Network, YouTube's out there. Appreciate everyone joining in, watching, uh, joining in on the on the chat here on YouTube. Throw out your own bets, your own picks for tonight, for this weekend in the NFL, whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, we are here because we're covering a little bit of everything on today's show. Uh, we got NBA with Iggy Gilbert. He is back to give us some props and bets for Thursday nights. Smaller slate, but enough to get to. Uh, and then NHL will bring in uh, producer Adam Bernard uh, to, to give out some NHL bets and picks for tonight's bigger slate. And then uh, I got a couple college basketball bets that I will throw out, uh, sprinkle in throughout the show here. Um, Going to start right there before we talk some NBA with Iggy. Uh, I got a bet here to give out. It's arguably one of the games of the night. Uh, I think Illinois, Michigan, Illinois comes in here as uh, as the ranked opponent, but Michigan, uh, obviously the the big brand uh, and the home team. It, the spread is a little low at two and a half, so it should be entertaining. But give me the Illinois uh, money line here. It is minus one forty five on BetMGM. Not too bad. You can look at the spread if you want, uh, but I just think Illinois wins this game. This is a Michigan team that. So they just are, they're coming off a win against Ohio State last game. Uh, it was at home, but it, but it's a big rivalry game, and, and it was a game they obviously really got up for. Um, but I just see a letdown from that because this is still a team that before beating Ohio State last game over the weekend or uh, that was Monday night, uh, they lost five straight beforehand, and they and they're four and ten straight up over their last fourteen games. This is a, a down year for Michigan. Um, and at home, it hasn't really mattered because they've lost four of their last five home games straight up. So uh, this is kind of like a, a weird year for Michigan. And, and it's weird vibes for me with Michigan. This is, you know, I'll, I'll get to Illinois one second, but Michigan um, is kind of like a fade for me moving forward because um, th they have the whole situation with Doug McDaniel. Um, so he's playing tonight because it's a home game, but he has this weird road game suspension because of an academic issue. Um, where they've uh, suspend, suspended him for like the next, uh, you know, seven road games, I think, moving forward. But he's playing at home. Uh, but it's still weird vibes because he's going to be in and out of the lineup. Um, and I know he's playing tonight. Obviously gives them a boost. But it's it's, it's weird vibes with that, you know, rare kind of uh, unique suspension. But also with the whole situation with Juwan Howard as their head coach because, you know, he had a health issue where he missed time at the beginning of the year. So they had uh, Phil Martelli, their, their assistant head coach, be, you know, uh, coaching games for them. So Howard kind of got a late start to the year. Um, but when since he's come back, there's been multiple issues and, and kind of weird vibes because uh, he had an altercation, physical altercation with a strength coach in practice uh, recently. So that was kind of a weird, weird situation. And then um, they played on the road uh, at Penn State. Um, I think the game was actually in Philadelphia. So we had Phil Martelli, you know, former Philly coach uh, in, in college, um, had him step in as the head coach for that game. They still lost, but it, that, that's just like a weird thing to do. Um, and, and there's been some rumors that that Howard could be leaving here uh, after the season. We'll see. But Michigan is just one of those teams that um, I just don't have confidence in at all. I think the spread is, uh, the, you know, Illinois' favorite here for a reason, even though it's on the road. We're winning on the road in the Big Ten has been very tough to do. But Illinois is a team where I think they're looking to bounce back after losing to Maryland last game, um, upset at home to Maryland. Uh, you know, it's a tough loss. But before that, their only losses this year were on the road at Purdue, on the road at Tennessee, and at home to Marquette. Those are three, you know, marquee top ten teams that, Losing any of those, even though one of them was at home to Marquette, but losing on the road to Purdue and Tennessee is completely understandable. But they've won um, the rest of their games this year, and they have besides that upset to Maryland. But um, this is now just like a, a team that's even though they've lost Terrence Shannon uh, to suspension, they've had guys step up. Marcus Domas, Quincy Garrier, uh, Coleman Hawkins have all stepped into bigger roles, and they're weirdly playing. Uh, still at a high level despite losing their best player in Terrence Shannon. So I, it, it's just something where I've completely flipped. I was I was ready to fade Illinois moving forward, but I, I flipped on them. So uh, give me the road favorites here in this Illinois-Michigan, uh, one of the better games tonight. 
All right, let's talk some NBA now. Uh, bring in Iggy Gilbert. He is, uh, if you if you haven't seen all of his betting articles over on Fantasy Alarm, he is pumping them out uh, on a regular basis there. Uh, so get the All Pro subscription at Fantasy Alarm to see his uh, his betting picks and and articles there. Uh, but we bring him on here from time to time as well to give some some picks out. What's up, Iggy? How you doing, man? Hey, Dan. Glad to be back, man. Uh, love being here talking ball with you, man. I'll make sure I go get that Illinois pick in. And I'm also interested to see what Adam has to say about my ass versus the Bruins later on. But we got some good games tonight, man. We got we do have a few on TNT, so marquee national games. Uh, you know, I feel like players do step it up in those moments. So glad to be here, though. Yeah, these Thursdays are, are smaller slates, but we do have some like big games. So I know people are going to be watching. I know I'll be watching. So I want to get some picks in for these games. Um, I wanted to start real quick, uh, but before we get to, to any more bets tonight, I uh, got to ask you about this Pascal Siakam trade because uh, he is going to Indiana. Uh, the Pacers are playing tonight. Well, we'll see if he does end up playing or not. But um, just your overall thoughts on this trade, you know, for. Uh, the impact for the Raptors, um, impact for the Pacers, um, and maybe how you're kind of approaching both teams, like betting wise, now moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Toronto is going to be in a big state of flux. Uh, you know, we, we'll talk about Scotty Barnes here in a minute, but uh, you could tell they've gone away from uh, the team that got him to the championship. You know, Kawhi left immediately. Uh, Pascal's kind of one of the last. Van Fleet's been gone for a while, um, you know, and Nick Nurse going to Philadelphia. And you can see what he's doing with Philadelphia and Joel Embiid. So I just got, uh, I think that the implications for betting is we, we, we might need to be hesitant. Uh, they're kind of going to a smaller lineup. It looks like, uh, Jakob Partel's still injured. He's going to be injured for a little bit. So, um, yeah, you know, I may be hesitant on the money line. Like at home tonight, it's pretty tight against Chicago. May watch out because there's just too many dynamic factors with their lineup. As far as Indiana goes, man, what it's kind of perplexing. They're making moves like they think they can make a push in the Eastern Conference. Um, but right now, no Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, you're going to probably rely on Siakam and Miles Turner a lot. We're going to kind of see what the algorithms do to their props. Uh, but from a fantasy perspective, you know, Bruce Brown going over there might get up a few more minutes at Toronto if you kind of do, uh, you know, fantasy points or something on sleeper like that, kind of keep an eye out on that. And then I do think Pascal Siakam is going to kind of be on double-double watch. I think his rebounds go up because uh, Bruce Brown was going in and getting rebounds even as a six-man. Tyrese Halliburton could get rebounds, but he's out. Uh, Miles Turner to be a center, you got to kind of pick and choose those games when you're kind of looking at him to have a big night. So I, I have Siakam in fantasy, so I'm kind of interested in what's going to happen with the Kings tonight. Late ball game, so you know you may not want to count on him as far as that goes too. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a 10 p.m. Eastern tip, and um, I, I'm looking like at BetMGM right now. There's no props available for Siakam, so uh, again, we'll, we'll see if he does play or not. But um, yeah, maybe keep an eye on those. But there's, you know, if, if you want to dive into other props for Miles Turner or, or other Pacers, they are there. So, um, well, the you mentioned so the Raptors. Uh, the the Raptors game is the first one on TNT tonight. Uh, coincidentally, the NBA uh, working this out. So they got the Raptors on national TV here at home. Uh, Raptors pulled off the, a big win over the Heat last night without Siakam yeah. and, and uh, kind of like a new lineup there. They, you know, Between this trade and the OG and OV trade where they got, you know, R.G. Barrett and, and um, quickly, you know, as like kind of their two main guys now, um, this is a feisty team. But you like an, a different pick in this game, and this is a bet – uh, you are, you are keep going back to, and listen, it keeps cashing. So I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's only disappointed me one time out of six this month. So, uh, he's only Scotty Barnes over seven and a half rebounds. It started at plus plus one forty five at about, you know, five something mountain time in the morning, moved to plus one twenty. I see it at plus one ten on MGM right now. So this line's been moving steadily down. Uh, he's only covered this once this month. He's only averaging five rebounds a game this month and he's kind of in that flux position he's not part of the new regime i mean he was a triple double 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 machine for them as the point guard uh but like you said with the new york trade and og going and then you get rj in and emmanuel in and they're kind of running the like they came in started playing a lot of minutes immediately and uh they're they're kind of become the focal point of this offense so we'll see how that affects barnes he could go to a forward i just it's you know when it comes to betting i'll take one run one uh wrong 
bet on a player if it's been really successful and if they go and cover it again or if they you know lose the bet for me then we'll start re rethinking it but man uh if something's successful it's just the well dude you just go down and get your bucket full of water and come back up and you just keep doing it repeatedly repeatedly and that's one of my methods of betting and he's been really good to me and i do think scotty barnes is a great player i'm not trying to say he's a bad player i think he's he's all-star worthy to be honest or at least most improved player candidate worthy uh but his under has just been too reliable and i don't know if it's the bookies not putting the algorithm incorrectly factoring for his rebounds in 2023 i don't know if it's the new scheme but his minutes have been dropping um and so is his production so yeah, it's weird to see his rebound line at seven and a half because, uh, yeah, as you said, like he's been under this in what five of the last six, six of the last seven, something like that. Um, yeah. And I feel like that maybe it's raised a little bit because of Siakam now gone and they're kind of expecting maybe some more Barnes rebounds. But last night in the game without Siakam, he only had five rebounds. So, only, yeah. Yeah, and they're playing back to back, so yeah, uh, you know that's just another statistic at your advantage, you know. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I think he's kind of getting game planned out or phased out for something they envision differently at Toronto. Weird. Um, all right. Well, yeah. So that so you're going uh, the under on Scotty Bounds rebounds. This has been cashing left and right. So I'm totally yeah. with you on this one. Uh, <laughs> you also like a pick in uh, in that Pacers game tonight uh, in the Kings Pacers on uh, on De'Aaron Fox, right? Yeah, both of these teams come in tonight losing three games in a row, but the Kings kind of had a brutal stretch there at the end. Uh, you know, they had Philly, Milwaukee, uh, Phoenix, uh, and then another team in there that was pretty good I, off the top of my head. But they're finally back home. Uh, you know, they're they're playing a little better at home, and Fox has scored over 30 points in his last game, so I'm taking De'Aaron Fox over 28 and a half points. His average is at 28 for the season. Um and they got to shake this losing scale. I mean, you can't really lose ground in the West right now. Like, you, there's just not enough games to go into the All Star break, and you try to make a push from like the ten or you know the nine spot and try to get out of the play in. They need to maintain that five. Um, it, they're kind of a perplexing team, but Fox has been very consistent with the scoring. Uh, I just think that the Pacers give up the second most points uh, to opposing teams. That's uh, not going to change. I mean, they're going to have to figure out their rhythm with or without Siakam because they don't have Bruce Brown. Um, Obi Toppin, this could be his last little hurrah here, you know, if he's coming off the bench still. Uh, so let me try to take a look. Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to be in a kind of off rhythm, you know, and Rick Carlisle's, I think one of the best coaches in the NBA, I'm sure he'll have them ready, but his mantra, you know, he's trying to change like the, the scoring, but I don't see how they're going to do it. They just don't have the defending and Bruce Brown was a good defender and they just got rid of him. So, um, I don't, you know, I just think that it's going to be a, sh a shootout. The Kings aren't really playing great defense this year. And I think that favors De'Aaron Fox in this bet to cover 28 and a half decent odds over at MGM right now. And uh, I just expect him to get a little over his average. That's what it boils down to for me tonight. Yeah. And th this game, uh, 247 and a half total is the, the highest uh, <laughs> over under of the slate. We've seen this a lot with Pacers games, and they're they're usually cashing the over, right? Yeah, it's nuts. I can't do it sometimes. It was like when Iowa, the football team, was had like that twenty eight and a half under, and my friend was like, "Yeah, do it. Yeah, hammer it." I was like, "You sure? Twenty eight and a half points?" And it hit. So it it's hit the same the thing. With, yeah, it's the same thing with the Pacers on the over, especially if they play Atlanta. Just I mean, that could be three hundred point game or Milwaukee three hundred point game. It's just it's ridiculous, kind of honestly. That happened uh, early this year, right? Milwaukee, yeah. Indiana. Yeah, they did. Yeah. It's, it was like I, I thought it was, and not, the spread was even, or the over under was even higher that game. I think it was like at two forty something, and they still smashed yeah. it. So. No defense. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the books are just telling us uh, something with these totals. You know, like with the with the Iowa game, or when you get Army Navy playing, it's a low total, and it's it's still gonna hit the under usually. So <laughs> I know it's weird how betting works like that sometimes. Yeah. Um, all right, how about the uh, your, your other pick here? And again, check out uh, Iggy's article on fantasyalarm.com for some uh, some more you know breakdowns of these picks here and, and other picks every night uh, during the week as well. Um, Timberwolves Grizzlies, you got a uh, prop in this one that you like. Yeah, I do like this one a lot. I've just been looking at Gobert. Uh, like I said, here's his stat line or his rebounding line uh, the last six games 16. 18, 17, 12, 17, 12. I mean, Rudy Gobert has become that paint presence. I think Cat's living outside the three-point line. I was originally 
looking at his three point prop, but it was at negative 195. It's kind of where my cutoff is for just a single prop on three points. But he's been living out there as a power forward. They allowed Gobert to really take over the paint. Um, and Memphis allows the second most rebounds to centers in the league right now. And they're the they're the, they've moved down to the fourth worst rebounding team uh, with, 50, I think it was 54.8. I don't have my article pulled up, uh, but I've watched that decline go down as I'm somebody that tracks rebounds quite a bit. And they're moving into one of the back half of the teams. Uh, you know, that, you know, Steven Adams was a big blow too. John Morant was a big blow, but so was Steven Adams and over trying to overcome his paint presence and, uh, you know, allowing, you know, smaller forwards essentially to try to do that in the front court. It's not really working out for them, but they are playing competitively. Uh, you know, the spread is, I believe, 12 and a half the last, yeah, right there, 12 and a half when I looked at it, uh, indicating a blowout, but they just really haven't been blown out the last couple of games without John Morant. So I, I do expect Rudy Gobert to play his minutes. I mentioned in the article, he's only got one game with less than 28 minutes this month and all the rest are over 32. So the volume's there. He's playing a lot of minutes. He's up for defensive player of the year, a Award, and a big part of that is his defensive rebounds, man. And I did forget to mention for the Scotty Barnes, there was a boost on the DraftKings. Uh, if you wanted to take it, you could put it. Or if you wanted to put it towards the future, not a bad idea before we get to the All-Star break. There you go. Yeah, the, the boost on the Barnes or uh, boost on this Gobert bet even if you want. Uh, that, yeah, that's, the, the, that's the second game on TNT tonight, right? That's the, the later game. So. Yeah. That's the later I love game. how you, you're throwing up picks for both the the marquee like national TV games. Um, even though it's you know maybe not totally exciting to watch. Uh, with you know <laughs> the Timberwolves are big favorites, right? Twelve and a half. I'm seeing on the spread, and, uh, yeah. and obviously Bulls Raptors isn't the best game to watch, but uh, yeah. you can have some bets going for those. Um, Iggy, thanks so much, man. Uh, you know, going forward, uh, you, you you're pumping out these best bets articles like most most days now, right? So that's what we can look out for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Over at Fantasy Alarm, pretty much uh, the last. 14, 13 days, and only one day off this month uh, as far as writing because we've been getting more NBA, and I love it. I'm betting regardless, uh, so I might as well help everybody else win some money. Still just right under 20, Zion Williamson. He hit his dirty la last uh, last night. Uh, Pelicans hit a record franchise three, so I try to tell this. this is my last bit of advice before I go. Try to account for unaccountable vari variables when you're betting, uh, but sometimes it's more difficult than you imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I mean, even with a couple losses last night, um, the way you've been rolling, like uh, tonight's probably the bounce back. So I, I know oh, yeah. your track record, you're, you're rolling. So, Oh yeah. We're right on pace for the goal, man. We're right on pace. So there you go. Uh, Iggy, thanks so much. And again, follow Iggy on Twitter. If you haven't uh, at IDP underscore Iggy uh, and check out all of his work at fantasy alarm and other places. He's doing a lot of stuff there. Uh, but Iggy, thanks so much, man. We'll have you on again soon. All right. Thanks guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so that's some NBA bets. Uh, we're going to bring on, uh, in just a second, our producer Adam Bernard for some hockey picks for tonight. Wanted to throw out one more college basketball bet before we move on here. Um, and that is a little underdog, a little road underdog. Actually, I'm going South Florida, uh, plus the 11 and a half here on the road at Memphis. Um, a little scary, uh, honestly, because Memphis is, you know, you can see they're, they're 15 and two. They are rolling through, uh, you know, their schedule so far. They're, you know, looking like a, a team that could be very dangerous in March. Ton of talent. You know, Penny Hardway has brought in a lot of transfers that are just, I've uh, really found their role on this team. Um, you know, they're playing fast, they're, they're scoring a lot, but. Their defense is is not trustworthy, and this is just too many points um, because uh, Memphis has not covered a double digit spread all season. They're zero and five against the spread when favored by double digits, um, and they're only three and eight against the spread as favorites this year. Um, this is just one of those instances where Memphis can score like ninety, a hundred. They've scored a hundred in these past two games, but. They're also allowing a ton of points, um, and it's kind of ironic because, or coincidental, whatever. Because uh, you know Penny Hardway, former NBA guy, obviously he has this team kind of playing like an NBA team would play with uh, you know fast pace. They're they're running, they're shooting threes. Uh, you know a lot of like an older team. You know that the average ages teams like 25, 24 years old. A lot of transfers. Um, and uh, offense is very good, high powered, can score 100 in a game, but their defense is lacking. And we've seen that in the NBA. 
you know, sometimes defense is just, you know, the, the effort is not there uh, the same. And that's the case with Memphis. Um, you know, this year they're averaging 81 points per game, but they're also giving up 74 points per game. And as I mentioned, that the, they're 0-5 against the spread as double-digit favorites this year. Um, at home, weirdly, they're 1-7 against the spread. So it's not like when you when they're playing at home, they, they're blowing teams out or anything. That's not the case. Um, they have 15 wins this year, but against non-mid-major teams, so against you know the power conference or their own um, their own ACC, AAC opponents, only one of their wins this year has been by double digits against uh, a non-mid-major team. So you know they, they this this spread at 11 and a half. South Florida honestly is definitely a tier below Memphis, but this is just too many points. Um, this is also kind of like a weird look ahead spot um, for Memphis because um, they just, you know, had a really good game against Wichita state. They're playing Tulane on the road next game. And Tulane's a team that beat Memphis twice last year. Uh, and they're a team that's also built very similar to what Memphis is a lot of transfers in there from, you know, power conference teams, um, a team that also plays very fast and, and very quick. And, you know, a team that's, uh, again, they, they beat Memphis twice last year has proven, uh, to be a feisty, you know, uh, worthy opponent for Memphis over the recent years here with Penny Hardway there. I feel like there could be a little bit of like a, a slight look ahead where um, South Florida could just, you know, they're going to, I expect them to beat South Florida here. I'm not calling for the upset straight up, but I just think it's too many points to be given. Um, you know, a South Florida team that um, has the guard play and also another team that likes to play fast, they're going to match. Uh, Memphis's pace here and not, um, you know, not get, uh, I think, run out because they, they like to play up and down as well. And they have the guards to kind of match that. So, um, yeah, give me give me the uh, the Bulls, the South Florida Bulls here is the is the road um, underdogs against the spread. Um, Eleven and a half, just a little too big there. Um, all right. How about some hockey picks? Let's bring in producer Adam Bernard at pucking thoughts on twitter if you don't follow him go give him a follow um new better hockey now episode is up now on, on fantasy alarm better sports network so check that out him anthony rivera chris murray um and, and uh adam uh coming in here giving giving us hockey picks every now and then so what's up man hey what's going on uh we uh we're ready for a thursday 11 game slate or what i'm ready uh i know yeah the the, the, it's funny because we get like sometimes just like two or three, four games in hockey, and then we get these huge slates. So you get an eleven gamer to dive into tonight. <laughs> yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays are your, and Saturdays, for that matter, are your three big hockey uh, schedule days if you really want to dive in and uh, go with a lot of picks. But uh, figuring there's been a lot of snow affecting things, so why don't we start down in sunny Florida tonight? How does that sound? We'll, we'll start down there. I like it. Yeah, yeah, you like Tampa Bay and Minnesota in this game. What's uh, what's your pick? So uh, Tampa Bay hosting the Minnesota Wild tonight. Um, I think, I mean, now the Lightning are going to be well-rested. They haven't played since Saturday. They've won three in a row. Victories have been a little bit on the close slide, only clearing the puck line in four of the last 10 victories. But one of those where they did clear it was against the Minnesota Wild. Uh, Minnesota did look good. Like they were starting to bounce back in their 5-0 victory against the Islanders, but the Islanders are pitiful right now. They've lost eight of 10 themselves. Uh, so I don't trust that Minnesota is playing at a level that can beat the Lightning on the road because they've also lost way more than they've won lately. So uh, considering Tampa Bay is thin on the blue line at the moment, and it's plus 175 on the puck line, which that almost scares me off because that's a little too much uh, there. So I'm going to just play it safe. I'm still getting the regulation win at plus 110 there at BetMGM. Uh, so I think the Tampa easily gets a victory tonight against a wild team that just can't get going right now. And uh, yeah, I, if you want to be a little risky and go for the puck line at minus one and a half, go for it. All right. Um, we, we had Iggy on earlier and he said uh, he wanted your thoughts on the Colorado Avalanche game tonight, his abs. Uh, and they're on the road at the Bruins. This is like kind of one of those those games of the night. Do you have any leans on this one or thoughts on it? So, yeah, it's definitely the early game of the night, the later game of the night being Rangers Vegas and uh, out in Las Vegas. I don't have a pick for my Rangers, and I don't know if Iggy's going to like my pick for tonight. Colorado, the last couple of games, uh, you know, they, they won 7-4 to four against Ottawa, but frankly, the fact that Ottawa was able to get four goals against them would alarm me just a little bit. 
and they lost to Montreal the day before 3-4. So this is their third game in four days. Would be a little concerned about being a little worn down against the Bruins team that's pretty healthy. Uh, I would take the Bruins in regulation here. It's not one of my top picks, but I would lean that way over anything for Colorado. But, you know, Colorado could, you know, they're pretty thin right now. They're dealing with some injuries. They've got one of the best top lines in the league. But uh, I think tonight, you know, the Bruins catching them uh, on a three and four, you know, I got to lean Boston there. All right. Uh, Let's go to Buffalo and Chicago. And uh, you got to pick in this one. So, yeah, this was originally supposed to be yesterday, but then the uh, snow delayed it to today. And that really, yeah. really screws the Blackhawks because now they have to play a black uh, back to uh, back to back today and tomorrow. Tomorrow being at home against the Islanders instead of having today off. And they've had they've been on the road. And, you know, for Buffalo, the game being delayed yesterday is like, OK, the guys just stay home and don't show up to the game. You know, the, nothing really changes for them besides being pushed back a day. If you're the Blackhawks. You're sitting around the hotel. What can you really do? You know, so maybe they were playing ping pong with Darren Pang last night down in the lobby. Well, he because he couldn't work the TNT game because that was supposed to be the TNT game. Obviously, they had nothing to call. Um, so I, factoring all that in, and yes, the Blackhawks did just beat the Sharks two to one. Take that for what's that what it's worth. But they have lost eight of their previous nine. Um, they, they have been able to keep teams scoring down, so maybe more of an a low scoring game here, but. Buffalo recently got Tage Thompson back, and it's ama- It's an amazing coincidence that when a team gets their top center back, they start playing better hockey. I, I mean, imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and also they're getting strong goaltending from Uko Pekka Luukonen, who has won four of his last five starts, allowing two or fewer uh, goals four of those times, and he's coming off a shutout against San Jose, who just can't even beat their fellow bad team. So I'm not ready to put the Sabres back in the playoff conversation yet. They still sit seven points out of a wild card two spot. They're still not a great team, but I think they are much better than Chicago as of late, and the Blackhawks just can't catch a break lately. Doubt it's a high-scoring game, but I'm still not touching the total, but I'll take uh, the Sabres puck line. I think they win at two, and you get that at minus uh, 110 at BetMGM. All right. Can you say the name of that goalie again? Uh, Uko Pekka Luukonen. <laughs> This is why I bring you on to talk hockey because uh, I have no idea even uh, if you ask me to spell that I couldn't. So, <laughs> and uh, to be fair, Buffalo's starting goalie was a much simpler pronunciation, Devon Levi, coming into the season, but he has not lived up to the hype. So the, the crease has been open for a UPL to take over. If you ever got to say the name, you can just say UPL. People will know what you mean. Oh, I see. <laughs> One of those names where they're just like, all right, let's just call him by you know his initials or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, UPL. <laughs> it works well. Um, all right, Montreal and Ottawa, a little Canadian uh, rivalry matchup here. Where are you going with this one? Now, shockingly, Canadian rivalry here. You're not too far away from one another, but this is their first meeting of the season all the way into mid-January we are, and they have not played yet. Uh, Montreal played last night. They should be riding high off a 3-2 win over the Lowly Devils. Uh, while the Habs have trended towards the under lately, they are facing Eunice Corpusalo in net for tonight who has only won twice in his last 12 appearances, and he's got a save percentage of 862 that you, Servo, could potentially goaltend that well. So I don't know. I don't know about that. I may, maybe a little bit lower in the 800s, but nonetheless, I mean, a start, your starting goalie posting an 862 save percentage, you could say what you want about bad defense in front of him, which is you know a little bit true. I mean, you still got to stop the puck. Um, yeah. now, Ottawa, Ottawa's gone over this total in uh, their last four games, and they only go under when they play a defensive-minded team. Montreal's not really a defensive-minded team, and they've got some shooters that can easily take advantage of a team with poor goaltending. No interest in the winner or loser here, but I think the over hits easily. The over 7.5 is at plus 170. That's probably getting a little too cute, but uh, I'll take the must minus 130, a little juice there, maybe throw it in a parlay. All right, let's stay in Canada for your last pick here. Uh, Vancouver hosting Arizona tonight. Uh, late Late-night game as well. Um, where are you going with this one? So you got a few good late games tonight. Rangers, night, uh, Golden Knights, like I mentioned, I'm staying away. Uh, Predators, Kings, you could look at the Predators because the Kings have been so bad, but it's their first game home in like six or seven games, and sometimes teams get a jump when they play at home, so I'm not touching that. Uh, Seattle, Edmonton, also a good late game, but you know that's could go either way, both ways. Let's talk about Arizona, Vancouver. They're coming off a t- the Canucks are coming off a tough road loss at Columbus to wrap up a seven-game road trip. This is their first home game since January 2nd. They've gone over this total nine times in their last 13 games. This is also their first game against Arizona this season. Arizona's wrapping up a three-game road trip tonight, and they've gone over this total in three of their last five. 
One of those was a 6 nothing push against the Wild, which, come on, man, can you get one goal to get the over Minnesota? Arizona got six. You can't get one to get it over? Anyway, uh, you know, Coyotes goaltender Connor Ingram has been strong in net. He's allowing three or fewer in his last six appearances. Two shutouts, terrific save percentage, but he is facing a big step up in opponent over his last few starts. And the last time he did play a top team like a Vancouver uh, was with when, when they faced Winnipeg and Boston a couple of weeks ago, and both of those games went over. Canucks have a lot of firepower, tied for the most points in the league. This is They're playing a team that's 17 points behind them in the standings. Uh, I think we're going to get a nice up-and-down affair here, and they clear the six and a half. Uh, the fact that's even, that this is even money does give me a little bit of that. Maybe Vegas knows something that we don't vibe, but this is probably one of the better values you're going to find out of the late action tonight. So let's take Arizona, Vancouver over six and a half at even money. Four strong picks from you, Adam. Uh, to recap, so you got uh, the over in Arizona, Vancouver. You got the over in Montreal and Ottawa. And then uh, you got Buffalo on the puck line against Chicago. And then Tampa Bay um, to win uh, in 60 there against Minnesota. Yes. And you're, are, and you're not touching are. Rangers Vegas tonight, you said. No, I mean, because both, I mean, the Rangers maybe have gotten back on track after a rough start to January, but, you know, they're going on the road first game. You know, well, let's see if that continues. Vegas, too, has been very hot and cold up and down lately. So just a, a, two teams you can't get a read on at the moment. So I'm just going to enjoy that game and watch that game. So. All right. Awesome stuff, Adam, man. Um, again, pucking thoughts on Twitter, the Better Hockey Now show on uh, Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm YouTube. So check that mm-hmm. out as well for more more hockey talk from uh, Adam Bernard and the, and the hockey crew with us. So uh, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks for jumping man. Appreciate on. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, as always. Um, all right. Uh, that's about it for us. I wanted to just mention, um, I'm not going to get breakdowns on these, but if you want some more college basketball bets tonight, I will say I like San Francisco tonight at home. Uh, this is a late night game against Loyal Marymount, so you can look at San Francisco against the spread. I also like Drexel at home uh, against the spread in their game. Uh, I think they're playing uh, Monmouth. Um, just like some two home favorites, you know, it, at the spread. I think Drexel is like nine, nine and a half point favorites, and San Fran is 10, 10 and a half. Um, but I just think that both win easy and cover those spreads. Um, so if you want uh, some more college picks, uh, again, earlier I said uh, I like South Florida on the road to cover against Memphis, and I like um, Illinois on the money line. Uh, you can look at the spread too, but Illinois on the money line on the road uh, at Michigan. Don't usually go with these uh, road road teams. Um, we're riding some home games, uh, home teams this season because they've been very profitable uh, just the home college basketball teams this year throughout the country, but looking at a couple road uh, road teams tonight. Um, that's about it for us. Tomorrow, two p.m. Eastern, we got uh, loaded, you know, NFL divisional round bets, props from me and Howard Bender. So tune into that tomorrow, two p.m. Eastern, here on Better Sports Network, Fantasy Alarm. And uh, today, you know, coming up after uh, after us in a few hours here, five p.m. Eastern is the um, NBA DFS live show. With John and Pemba, uh, John and Pemba, and James Grande. So um, you got Iggy's bets from earlier. You can get some uh, DFS as well from those guys, and then high stakes fantasy football as well with Eric Balkman uh, on the Better Sports Network YouTube. So um, stay tuned for all that tonight. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Here as always on Better Sports Betting. Appreciate everyone tuning in here on a Thursday. Uh, we'll catch you tomorrow, and uh, good luck with all your bets tonight. Better sports betting on the best.